Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I'm so happy to share another painting demo with you. So in this demo, I'm going to share with you both the process of value study as well as the full color painting. I work both of them sort of in tandem. So you're going to see me working on the first layer of value study first and then the color version and then back to the value study to finish that up and then go back to finish the color version. So I mentioned it before, ever since I study with Andy Evenson, value study become this invaluable process for me, no pun intended. But it just gave me such a clear vision of how to resolve what I see before me into simple, readable shapes. So even though it might seem like it's a waste of time to draw the same scenery twice, but I believe it end up saving me time because I have a clear plan to execute instead of trying to figure things out as I go. Now the first watch for value study is the middle value. So the moment I put down the first wash, my painting has two values, the light value, which is the white of the paper, and the middle value, which is the first layer I put down. Now I want to play with a little bit of wet on wet here because the background mountain has a little bit of trees and shadows. That's something that I want to put in some soft detail here. So value study is also great for me to experience and to take some risk because it's not a final painting, so I get to try different things out. So if you kind of squint your eyes and you can actually see the light and the middle tone already. So I paint the background as the middle value and that connects to the house on the left and also the house in the middle. That connects to the figures and also the trees on the right and also the shadow casted by the house and the figures and also the car. So as you can see, the biggest thing with value study is connection. So you simplify the whole painting by connecting everything that's not light value together. So after I'm done with the first wash for the value study, I start to get started with the color version. The paper is a little bit bigger. It is 12 by 16. And since this is going to be the finished painting, I need to make the drawing just a little bit tighter. So really try to get the perspective and the scale right. But at the same time, I try to stay loose. So I'm eyeballing a lot of stuff. Drawing the figure. Now I do change the figure a little bit. But mostly I want to capture that sense of light. And I think that figure lit by the sun against the dark background is very, very effective. And I start to put some figures in the background. They are sitting down. They do have some chairs and tables setting up outside because dine-in is still not available at Leavenworth during that time. But mostly I just want to make it look a little bit more interesting by adding some more figures instead of just two figures like the photo. So if you can recall, I actually shared about this photo from my last video. I initially was going to crop this photo into a landscape ratio, but after some sod, I feel like the background mountain is so big and so tall, I think to make it into like a portrait ratio, so like a vertical painting, it will have a little bit more of the sense of scale and impact. I still crop it in a little bit though, because I do want to show the house and the figure a little bit more clearly and to make the scale a little bit more relatable instead of making the house tiny and people tiny because I was walking on the street. So if I make the house and the figure too small, it's going to feel like I am really far away. So I am pre-mixing the color that I'm going to use for the first wash. And these colors are going to be the color of the light, which is going to be the white of the paper in the value study. So I start from the top down. My paper is slightly tilted, so there will be bead gathering on the bottom and I can use those to continue my wash down. So keep the first wash fresh and transparent, which means that you use a little bit more water to keep the paint flow a little bit better. 
Now you do see me change the color in the middle of the wash because I do want to have different colors of the light. So for example, the tree, I want to have some bright green. And when it comes to the background mountains, there's a little bit more gray. It's a little bit more coolers on the right and a little bit warmer on the left and with a little bit of dirt color. And now there are a few parts I want to leave it white, which is the canopies and the white wall of the house. So technically the first wash of the color version, you actually have two values. You have the highlight, which is the white paper and the light, which is the wash that I'm painting in right now. But again, it's all part of the light. It's all the color of the light. So I am not really trying to define anything right now just yet. So for the first wash, don't get bogged down by the details and the structure of things. So just relax and paint some color on it, some bright and beautiful colors on it. Really have some fun with the first wash, okay? You can paint some wet onto wet. Enjoy the property of watercolor. You don't need to define anything until second and third wash. So here comes the second wash. The first wash is pretty much dry. And now I'm actually painting what you see in the first wash of the value study on the left. So I am going to start to loosely define the middle value now. So now I take a little bit more time in the background to get those distant trees and the shadow in. And you can see me holding multiple brush at the same time because I do want to switch out brushes. One of the brush is a little bit smaller and it has a little bit thicker mixture on it. So this is going to help me so that I don't need to keep remixing color and consistency. And because of wet on to wet, when I'm painting some darker tone on it, it's going to fade off tremendously. So make sure you mix a thick enough value and consistency so it doesn't create cauliflower edges. So this is the third Leavenworth painting after my trip there. And if you include the failed attempt I did, this is actually the sixth painting. I've been learning a lot painting these sceneries, especially for scenery like these, where majority of the background is mountain, it's not sky, so it's not a bright light value. So I feel like I get a hang of it in this painting. Connect the background into the tree, the middle ground tree. It's very important you connect them. The only thing that's separating them are the colors. I can tell you from experience that it is very easy to lose sight of your vision, which is your value study. Because you're starting to look at a photo a little bit more carefully to study the colors, and that makes you look at the detail a little bit more. So it's quite important that you resist the temptation to try to define everything that you see and paint all the details that you see. Keep your eye on your vision, which is your value study, and stick with your plan. If the value study works, then there's no need to make your color painting more complicated. So in this case, even though we know the middle ground tree and the background, there are different things. But in the value study, we connect them as one single value because if you squint your eyes, they share the same value. So we want to connect them in the color painting as well. Now I'm also going to paint the color of the house, the sort of reddish brown color wall. Keep it simple. And we're also going to define the window as well. And that's going to connect to the tree on the left and also the buildings on the left. I didn't finish the building on the top because it's going to be darker value so I can easily just paint it over. I want to just continue down and paint the overall shape on the house and the figure. So now I'm connecting the shape into the figure. And here I start to fall into the trap that I want to paint the shadow too soon but 
I quickly realized that I'm just painting the middle value. So I'm just painting the overall shirt color. And I connect the shape of the figure to the table and the chair and the figures on the back and so on. Again, it's all about connections. Connect as much as you can. And I paint the two figures in the middle. Keep your focus mostly on the shape, the head and the shoulder. The feet can be a little bit simpler. You might not even need to finish them. And I start to connect the shape to the cast shadow from the house and the figure. And just by painting the middle value, you can already start seeing the light, the luminosity of the scenery of the painting. So that means that the painting is at a good place. Once we put in the dark, it's going to be a lot better. And the contrast is there. The full value range is going to make the painting look more finished. But here is a side by side comparison of the value study so far and the color version so far. So back to the value study, we are going to finish our value study up by painting the dark value. So this is our second wash for the value study. So now that we paint the dark in, things will be defined a lot more now. And even though we're still trying to connect the shape as much as possible, the additional dark value is going to separate things and define things very effectively. So by painting the house on the left with darker value, it starts to separate itself from the background. And since I paint the dark part of the figure and the car, you start to get more sense of light directions. So the house on the left and the house in the middle connects to the dark part of the figure, the tables and the chairs, the truck on the right, and also some of the darks on the trees. And very importantly, the foreground trees on the right. This is going to help the sense of depth in the painting a lot. So the value study is almost finished. Very simple, just three values. But the composition, shapes, readabilities are all good. So we can go ahead and start to finish our color painting. So now back to our color version. We start to paint the house on the left and make sure the value is dark enough. We really want that separation between the background and the house on the left. This is the part that some of the students have problem with because you need to start mixing some darker values and you need to use a lot more paint. So one of the fear that the student have is to use more paint. But if you don't use more paint, you're not going to make some more intense color and dark. So now that I'm starting to paint the house on the left, you can start to see the value range start to expand. And just like the value study, you try to connect as much shape as possible. So I do a little bit of wet onto wet into the house itself just to suggest some soft details. And even here in the flag, I'm painting, I think it's the Canadian flag here. Even though there's white in that flag, it is still in the shadow. So I'm painting it with darker value. Just add a little bit of red on the side. Painting the tree and connect that to the dark side of the figure. Adding some shadows and darks on the shirt as well as the pen. And immediately you start to see that beautiful sun glow on the figure. And all I did is to add another wash on it. And I connect the dark shape to the house. The brown wall needs to be a little bit darker. Adding some dark detail wet onto wet so it's not going to be overpowering. Just a little bit subtle details within the wash. Now I change to a smaller brush with sharp tip so I can define those dark a lot better to get those more sophisticated shapes. 
start to paint the dark of the middle ground figures and such. Again, keep them simple. Just a couple brush strokes. Try to define those structures and you should be good. Now the left side of the painting is pretty much done. So I continue the shape to the right. So connect the house to the dark green on the trees. It's especially important around the white canopies because those canopies should be really bright and glowing under the sun. So by painting the surrounding darker, like the trees and stuff, it's going to make those light pops. And again, keep it loose and just keep the general value shape there. You don't really need to define all the details in the background and try to make sense of all that. Now I'm pre-wetting the tree a little bit because I do want some soft shapes and soft edges there. So I paint the truck first, give it a little bit rusty color, wet on to wet, just so it looks a little bit richer, a little bit more variety and more alive. Now back to the middle ground trees. And because I pre-wet those area, we're gonna get some soft edges and soft shapes. And that's actually what I want. I don't want everything to be sharp edges, some soft shape and some color varieties like that can actually help. And again, try to keep it simple. Don't try to paint every single leaves there. Keep it simple and just try to define the overall structure. And painting some details for the house on the right. Give it some dark. And those yellow poles on the right, I really like them. So I just add a little bit of dark to just give it some sense of structure and dimensionality. So the painting is around 80% there. I just need to define a little bit more things. But I look at the roof and I feel like the roof is too pale. In the photo, the roof has a little bit more color. So I go over it with a glaze of kind of reddish orange. And that just makes the color a little bit better. But now the background is starting to become too light. So I really want to let the roof color and the light pops a little bit more. So I did a glaze over the background. But again, keep it simple, just some big shape. And while it is wet, I take that chance to add a little bit more wet onto wet shapes and shadow. Like I mentioned before, anytime you can have some wet onto wet, you should definitely consider doing them because after it is dry, you don't get another chance. You can re-wet the surface, but it usually just doesn't look as fresh and it's easier to mess up what's underneath. So I mix a dark green color and start to paint the tree on the upper right foreground. So that tree is going to make the overall painting have more depth. One of the things I'm quite happy about this painting is that I managed to keep the shape simple. And while it is still wet and quite thick, I scratch out some highlights with the palette knife. So give it some hints of branches and leaves and stuff. So the painting is pretty much done, but I feel like the foreground can use a little bit more work. So I actually add another shadow in the foreground. So that would just feel like there's more going on outside the frame and as well as just make the whole scene feels a little bit more complete. And that shadow actually makes the light in the middle feels like a nice spotlight. So even though that wasn't my original plan in the value study, I do think this is the right call because it feels a little bit more complete and feels a little bit more interesting. I'm darkening some of the cast shadow so that the light on the ground pops out a little bit more. So the foreground shadow, I darken those as well. 
and it feel like it can be just a little bit more sophisticated. So I add just a little bit more cast shadow, make the shape a little bit more sophisticated so it doesn't feel like it's just a dark stripe in the foreground. So here's the finished painting side by side with the value study. So even though the whole video is sped up, you can see the whole process. I hope you like this painting and enjoy this painting demo. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I recently reached 100,000 subscribers, so I really, really appreciate you. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. I will see you next time.